In this section, Collecting, Building, and Connecting, we are going to explore the data structures that Go provides to allow us to collect, build, and connect data. With regards to collecting data, we will be looking into arrays and slices. We will follow that up with learning how to build hash tables. In Go, they're called maps. And finally, we'll learn how to create user-defined types and connect pieces of functionality together using interfaces in Go. In this video, we're going to learn about arrays in Go. An array is a fixed indexed collection of items of the same type. The elements in an array are accessible using zero-based numbering. In this illustration, the first element of the array is at index zero, and the value at index zero is three. The last element in the array is at index 4, and the value at index 4 is 15. We can access and set elements in the array using the respective numeric index in the array. An array's length is the number of elements that the array can hold. In this integer array, we are able to hold 5 integers. It's important to note that Go treats arrays as values. The size of an array is part of its type definition. When you declare an array, the length of the array is important because the length of the array is part of its definition. Once an array is declared, it is fixed. The array cannot grow and the array cannot shrink. To declare an array, we use the square brackets and inside the square brackets, we specify the length of the array followed by the type of the array. It's important to note that an array can only hold values of the same type. Another way to say this is an array can only hold homogeneous values. We can set the element in an array by referring to the numeric index of the element that we wish to set. We write out the array's identifier and in square brackets, we specify the index number of the element in the array. We use the equal sign assignment operator to assign the value to the numeric index of the element we wish to set. Similarly, to access an element in an array, we enter the index number within square brackets to retrieve the element stored at that particular numeric index. Let's open up the declareArrays.go source file in the declareArrays directory. Starting out in the main function, we declare an integer array having a length of 5. Since we didn't initialize any integer values to populate the array with, the values inside the array will default to the zero value of the integer type. In this case, all the integer values in the array will be zero. Since arrays are treated as values in Go, it's important to note that when we pass an array into a function, a copy of the entire array is passed to the function and not a reference to the array. Let's say we have this function here called populate integer array and we pass the array my array to it. Notice here that the function only accepts arrays with a length of 5. If we try to send this function an array with a length of 4, we would get an error, since an array of length 5 is a different type than an array of length 4. Here, we have an example of how to set the individual elements in an array using the numeric index. However, we are making a change to the copy of the myArray variable passed in as an input parameter and not to the original myArray variable. So the changes that we make here will not be reflected in the myArray variable. So you might wonder, how can we change this function so that we can update the changes to the myArray variable? We can make this happen by introducing a return value. Let's take a look at the populate integer array with return value function. Notice that we specify a return type, an array of length 5. Just like we did in the other function, 
we assign values to all the elements in the array. The only difference is, now we return the copy of the array back to the caller of the function. And notice that we assign the output of the function populate integer array with return value to the my array variable. And now, when we print out my array, we will see that our changes are reflected. Go has a built-in function called len that will give us the length of an array. Let's look at the Beatles array example function. Here, we have declared a string array of length 4. The array represents the Beatles rock band, and each element in the array is the name of one of the band members of the Beatles. Right after our declaration, we initialize all the elements in the array to the respective band member name. Then, we print out the contents of the array. Note that we can access the third band member name in the array at index 2 since we are using zero-based numbering. And finally, we use the len function to give the length of the array. Going back to what I mentioned to you before, Go treats arrays as values. Let's say I declared another string array of length 4 called Great Rock Band from the 60s. If I were to assign this variable the value of the Beatles array, I would get a full copy of the Beatles array to the Great Rock Band from the 60s array. This happens because when we assign one array to another, all the elements from the array on the right-hand side are copied over to the array on the left-hand side. And if I were to do an equality comparison between the Beatles array and the Great Rock Band from the 60s array, I will find that the two values are equal. Equality comparisons of two arrays are done value for value. Let's run the Beatles example and we see the results of the equality comparison. Now, let's take a look at the U2 array example. We have another rock band here called U2, and notice that we have both declared the U2 array and we've initialized it. In the Beatles example, it took us four lines of code to do this, and in the U2 example, we can do it in one shot in a single line of code using an array literal. And similarly, we print out the array and show the second band member's name, which happens to be at index 1 of the U2 array. Go also allows us to declare multidimensional arrays. In this illustration, we have a 3 by 4 matrix, which consists of 3 rows and 4 columns. To access the value of a given element in the matrix, we would specify two index numbers, the row number and the column number to retrieve the element. For example, the value 7 is at index 1, 2 of the matrix. We're going to look at a code example now where we implement the multidimensional array shown in this illustration. Let's open up the matrix.go source file in the matrix directory. We start out by declaring the myMatrix variable as a 3 by 4 matrix. We use this array literal to define the elements of the matrix. Now, we print out the values of some elements in our matrix. Notice that we have to use both the row and column index number to access the value of an element in the matrix. Next, we do a first attempt at printing out the matrix. Let's run the program and notice that the matrix that we have printed out here looks nothing like the matrix in our illustration. Let's create a function to print the matrix in a more pretty manner. Going back to the code, let's take a look at the print 3 by 4 matrix function. The function takes a 3 by 4 multidimensional array as input. We start out getting the row and column lengths, and then we have two for loops. One for loop is inside the other. In the outer for loop, we are looping through the rows, and in the inner for loop, we loop through the columns. In the inner for loop, 
we print out the value at each element of the current position. Inside the outer for loop, we make a fmt.println call to print a new line between each row that gets printed out. Now, when we run our program, we have a prettier looking matrix that is similar to the matrix that we saw in the illustration. In this section, we learned how to declare and initialize arrays in Go. We learned that arrays are considered values in Go, and we saw how to declare and initialize a matrix which happens to be a two-dimensional array. Arrays are nice, but due to their rigidness and inflexibility, they are seldom used.